Here's the uh, multi-gauge that I like to use. Uh, it has a tachometer, a voltmeter, uh, water temperature, and oil pressure. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get this installed in the 77 bus. So here's the dash, a uh, little bit dusty right now, but we're gonna go ahead and get the multi-gauge installed. I'm gonna try and fit it right in here. So the first thing that I did was uh, pull the heater control levers out uh, that right here. Um, most often they just pull right out. They rely on this little uh, kind of friction um, hold on the heater control levers themselves. Um, this little hole right here. Um, sometimes you need to fit a screwdriver in there and kind of pry it out, but uh, in my case I just pulled them right out. Well, we're going to undo the screws here and pull out the uh, dash assembly. We may need to label the connections on the back so that they all go um, back together correctly. So, a oh, <laughs> little uh, spring just came out when I pulled the uh, piece out here. And that looks like this. So, I'm going to pull the other three out and uh, kind of show you. Uh, what the gauge cluster looks like on the back. Pulled all the screws out uh, and their little tabs. Um, I've actually pulled the blank plate out of the uh, gauge cluster. Here it is right here. It attaches with these two screws uh, in the back there. And uh, if you dislocate the speedometer cable, um, the whole uh, gauge cluster uh, kind of pulls out a little easier without having to um, really disconnect anything else. So now what we can do is um, try to fit our multi-gauge into this slot here. Now what I'm going to do is actually attach it from the back uh, coming through. So I'll take a shot of that and you'll be able to see that here. So I'm just uh, kind of holding it in place here. See, it's still pretty loose. Um, what what I'm going to do is actually uh, glue it into place. I can't think of any other way to uh, secure it. Um, possibly making a mounting bracket for it, but due to the limited space and everything behind the uh, the gauge cluster here uh, may not be able to do that. So I'm thinking hot glue will actually do really well in holding it in place. It's pretty lightweight. Um, you know, it's pretty small. So I think I think that should hold it pretty well. All right, so we have a little bit of hot glue uh, holding the uh, multi-gauge in, and it uh, looks like it's going to hold up nicely. I'm going to go ahead and glue the rest and uh, put the gauge cluster back in. Now we have the uh, gauge installed. It's all glued in the back. It's really secure uh, using the hot glue. And if we see here, we can see it's it fits perfectly within the... Uh, the spot in the, the gauge cluster here. It even has the function buttons accessible, um, which you can uh, set the um, the shift light, and it has a couple other functions. Um, so what we're going to do now is uh, <coughs> here's the pigtail uh, for the wiring. We're going to get this all uh, wired up, and um, I'm going to be doing some other wiring too. Um, you can see that. This uh, is no good. Some of the uh, existing wiring somebody did. And um, one item I wanna kinda bring to attention is uh, I ran this uh, four uh, conductor wire from where the computer is under the back seat. And um, I'll walk you through how I did that. And uh, these actually uh, have the gauge uh, wires that we need to connect up to this. So I'm going to get this soldered together and then I'll walk you through the path of how I ran this cable. So near the fuse box here we have the multi-conductor cable coming down uh, at the front of the van and it uh, actually 
wends its way around the front and goes down an existing hole that the main harness goes through. So here's that main hole that I was talking about and it just kind of follows the main harness all the way back. So as much as you can, just follow, follow that main harness. Now, my bus actually has a skid plate that goes all the way down the belly and um, a couple of the other ones I've seen do not have this um, but it actually conceals all the ducting and whatnot and uh, makes a pretty nice cover so we're gonna take a look at how it goes up uh, into the rear bench seat and this is right after the skid plate and we come up and we see um, following all of the other wiring into the grommet that we drilled for the main Subaru wire harness. The gauge cluster is put back. Um, the heater controls and whatnot are put back into place. We'll talk about um, that in a future episode. But uh, the actual multi-gauge is installed and when we click on the uh, ignition We'll see that it comes to life here. We have the voltage meter. We have the water temperature. Its low end is 40 degrees. It goes to 40 to 150 degrees Celsius. And then we have the um, oil pressure. So right now, uh, this is in the dark mode. It essentially lights off. So. Um, it's actually somewhat hard to see the tachometer here, but when I turn on the lights or the parking lights, here we go, it's, uh, it becomes more visible. Now it's at the lowest level on the dimmer, so as I bring it brighter, it's brighter and brighter here. Um, at night, this gauge is super bright, so um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it down pretty low. All right, so here we have the gauge um, with a warmed up engine and uh, looks like we're doing about a thousand RPM, 13.7 volts. Looks like we're at 85 degrees Celsius and oil pressure uh, range in, you know, at idle here between 10 and 20. So as we uh, rev up, let's see start to climb. So that's the gauge in a nutshell. Um, I like that gauge. It works well. It fits really nicely in the gauge, uh, existing gauge cluster and gives us basically everything that we would need to operate the Subaru safely. So um, let me know if you have any questions on it and uh, yeah. Answer.